I'd also like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Hello everyone, and welcome to the 2018 AXI Conference. My name's Ian Silk, I'm the President of AXI. This is the 17th annual conference of AXI, my first as President. And before I go on, I want to um, pay tribute to my predecessor as President, Gerard Noonan, who followed Michael O'Sullivan, who was the inaugural President of AXI. Gerard has just stepped down from the board after a very long period as President and a fantastic contributor and leader of the organisation. Happily for AXI, he's going to remain as a member of the Member Council but he's made a terrific contribution. I want to use this forum to publicly thank him for that. So thank you, Jerry. <laughs> AXI was established by a group of superannuation funds looking to share the cost of corporate governance research and proxy voting advice. They were motivated by the belief that ownership rights have genuine economic value and should be exercised and that environmental, social and governance risks are financially material for long-term investors. That tells you a lot about the principles which have guided AXI for the past 17 years. Collaboration, active ownership, ESG integration and long-term thinking. I'm assuming they're also a large part of the reason that we have so many people here today, in fact, a record crowd for an AXI conference. I want to talk about each of those four principles. The power of collaboration. As an organisation, AXI's greatest strength is our members' willingness to collaborate and to use their collective membership and collective assets we create value by using this collective impact to influence companies and financial markets in the interests of our members. And of course, the real members we're talking about are the members of superannuation funds, not the superannuation funds themselves, but the working men and women who entrust their retirement savings to the superannuation funds. Our members include 38 Australian and international asset owners and institutional investors. Collectively, they manage over $2.2 trillion in assets and own, on average, 10% of every ASX 200 company. So when we see today that the Royal Commission appears to have been the catalyst for just five financial organisations losing more than $30 billion in market value, that's $3 billion that's been stripped from the retirement savings of the working men and women who are members of our superannuation funds. In 2017, 91% of the priority companies we sought improvement from made positive changes. It's a great statistic, but what does it mean in practical terms? Let me give you a couple of examples. In 2017, 10 of the 13 companies we targeted on gender diversity appointed their first woman director. All 12 priority companies we targeted on remuneration improved their practices in line with shareholder expectations. Engagement helped improve reporting and practices in fresh food, food and consumer goods supply chains at six priority companies. It's clear that as the major voice of asset owners in Australia, we are driving positive change. And although it may be discomforting at times, I think most listed companies now recognise the value in engaging and listening. This morning we'll be joined by four influential company directors for our directors panel, so we can hear directly from them just how grateful they are. The importance of active ownership. During the HIH Royal Commission in the early noughties, Justice Neville Owen said, and I quote, 
If shareholders as owners are unwilling or unable to exercise their powers or make themselves heard, directors and management will lack guidance or constraint from those whose interests they are supposed to serve. Since then, Australian investors have shown themselves to be increasingly willing to use their ownership rights to improve long-term investment outcomes. In the early 2000s, only 30% of overall shareholdings were voted in Australia. That figure now is 67%. The introduction of Axie's voting alert service was instrumental in achieving this more than doubling of active ownership. In 2017, as a measure of the active ownership dimension of AXI members, AXI held 226 engagement meetings with 156 ASX 300 companies. We provided voting advice on nearly 1,800 resolutions and made submissions to six parliamentary inquiries and issued four major research reports. One of the highlights of today's program and sh um, sure to provoke an interesting discussion is a panel on the global trend towards passive investing. It's sure to be uh, a very interesting part of the program. I want to talk about the value of ESG integration. There's strong evidence the ESG factors have a material impact on companies' financial performance. Last year, the OECD acknowledged the growing body of academic research which showed that financial markets reward good ESG performance while poor ESG scores are an indicator of heightened risk. Super funds and other institutional investors are committed to delivering real investment returns to their beneficiaries. And it should come as no surprise therefore that they are demanding more information about how, how companies manage their ESG risks and opportunities so that they can price them into investment decisions. Finally, why we focus on the long term. Axie and our members are interested in long term outcomes, the 5, 10, 25 year horizon and beyond because that's who our beneficiaries are. That's the perspective they have. They don't have a short-term focus. They're not interested in getting in and out in 30 days. That's entirely anathema to their membership of long-term investment institutions. Unfortunately, the practices that prevail in some, in some markets and the conduct of individual companies sometimes prioritises short-term thinking. We face an ongoing battle to ensure companies and other financial system participants remain focused on the long term. In our experience, a narrow focus on short term profits can contribute to conduct issues. Of course we want companies to deliver good investment returns, but not at the expense of long term sustainability. And that requires consideration of a broader range of success measures. Key among these is having a good corporate culture. We're delighted to have ASIC Chair James Shipton share his thoughts with us this morning on the role of corporate culture, followed by a panel of well-known Australians who will discuss how to build and maintain a resilient culture. So to today's conference. The past few months have been bracing for corporate Australia, something of an understatement. Unethical and at times illegal activities by well-known companies have been exposed in a variety of forums, including of course the Royal Commission. This afternoon we'll be joined by one of Australia's most eminent journalists, Adele Ferguson, who has been pivotal in shining a light on wage fraud in the franchising industry as well as, as well as broader reporting on a range of corporate wrongdoing. Adele will moderate our panel on managing labour and human rights risks. Not surprisingly, public trust in Australian business has fallen 
and perceptions that some companies have damaged their social licence to operate. I believe that we as investors can make a significant and systematic contribution to rebuilding Australia's corporate reputation and credibility. And that's what we're going to explore over the course of this day. How can investors support this process and accelerate the pace of change? Importantly, as investors, we're not just seeking to tell companies what to do. We're also looking inwards and seeking to improve our own practices. To this end, Professor Ian Ramsey will launch the Australian Asset Owner Stewardship Code at the conference. The code raises the bar on investors, on each of us, to proactively manage our stewardship activities and it will make it easier for our members to see how funds manage their assets on their behalf. I and I, I hope all of you see this as vitally important for demonstrating the culture we want to be known for and our commitment to promoting a healthy, profitable and sustainable business environment. Now a couple of housekeeping matters about the conference. Firstly, I want to take this opportunity to thank our 2018 conference sponsors and especially our platinum event partner, Ausbill Investment Management. All speakers taking part in today's conference will be thanked for their contributions with a donation made on their behalf to the Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. The Cure Brain Cancer Foundation is the largest dedicated funder of brain cancer research in Australia. And finally, you can follow today's sessions and expert discussion on Twitter via the hashtag AxiConf. Thank you very much. I hope you have a terrific conference and would you please welcome the Chief Executive of Axie, Louise Davidson.